My friends, today I'm bringing a game to the table that will test our friendship. Rest assured though, those of you who are honorable shall be rewarded, and those that are dishonorable and choose to betray my trust, well, you'll actually be even more handsomely rewarded, so like, go nuts, I guess? <laughs> this is Among Thieves, a brand new Prisoner's Dilemma simulator from Indie Boards and Cards, and while what's in the box won't set it off, the actual table shenanigans here served up are the score. I'm sorry, that got a little away from me. Let's dig in. Inside the cover are the eight player screens that denote not only your character, but their symbol for the honor map. On the backs of each are player aids. Welcome in this game, as you will absolutely ask after every reveal, so what does this mean? A simple rule book and double-sided honor mat are next, past which we find the tokens and cards of the game. While the aforementioned player screens suffer from being far too flimsy to stand up reliably during the game, most everything else has a pretty good feel. I did want a little bit more weight from these honor tokens, but the corp cards are decently thick, which is nice. That's it for inside the box. Let me set this one up and I'll walk you through it. Every round begins with the Heist Master, who chooses some number of players totaling half the group to infiltrate and rob one of the game's three corporations. Here's the thing though, the heist itself is always successful. You're always gonna rob the corp and get away scot-free. What you won't always do, however, is profit, because as the game's name implies incorrectly is that there's honor among thieves. There isn't, there is only betray. As soon as the Heist Master has chosen the team, the very next thing you'll decide is whether or not you're going to be an honorable thief contributing to the cause, or a dishonorable one, robbing the honorable thieves of their share and doubling yours. The catch is though, if everyone is dishonorable, then there's no one actually contributing and you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. After everyone's revealed their intentions, you draw one card off the corp deck for every honorable player, resolve any events that come up, and then get paid, or not, depending. That's the whole game. You go around and around the group betraying your friends or showing them what a good person you are until one of the corporations has simply had enough of your nonsense and shuts you down for good. Whichever thief has earned the most cash wins. Oh, but there's one little twist left. If you've been the most dishonorable thief at the table, then it doesn't matter how much money you have, you just lose because there's some form of karma at work here. Thank God. While this game sounds simple, and it is, the entire game actually takes place outside the game. The sheer amount of negotiation in play here is astounding, and the rulebook encourages it. In our games, we've had people promising not only simple stuff like, I'll give you two million to take me along on your heist, and whatever I get from this heist, I'll split with you 50-50, but also legitimately ridiculous stuff like, I'll take you along, but if you betray me, you have to bring cake to the next game night. While the rulebook makes clear that any agreement is non-binding, you can completely lie if you want. I think there ought to be humanity level rules about promising cake and then literally saying to me that the cake was a lie. That's like GLaDOS levels of evil and I am not here for it. I actually loved Among Thieves, but you have to be able to feel out your group. As I mentioned, there's a lot about this game that has nothing, or at least very little, to do with the game itself, so your table has to be ready for that. There are certainly times when everyone gets so mired down with talk about whether or not they'll betray you that suddenly you realize it's been 15 minutes and no one's actually done anything. However, the mark of a good game is how much fun you have while it's on the table, and by that metric, Among Thieves ranks very highly. Among Thieves is a classic example of a game being more than the sum of its parts by putting most of the gameplay between the rules. Let's go through our checklist real quick. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. There are a couple of edge cases that the rulebook doesn't clarify, such as whether or not the event cards only pertain to those in the heist or not, a situation that came up quite a bit in our playthroughs of it, so I can't imagine that it simply snuck by the developer. Still, there's not a lot that actually gets in the way of the core negotiation here, so that's nice. Non-gendered third-person pronouns are used throughout the rulebook. Iconography clear. Mostly. With eight players, the game's maximum, each person's player icon can get a little confusing, but it's emblazoned on their player screen, so it only takes a second to check. Packaging well done. The smallish box fits everything very nicely, but won't accommodate sleeved cards, so you'll either have to go without, always a dicey choice, or find a different storage solution. There are enough baggies to handle the tokens, though, so that's nice. On the table. Good representation. 
Of the eight characters depicted on the player screens, five seem to be male, two of them seem to be female, and at least one appears to be non-binary. I would have preferred one or two less male forward characters, but the inclusion of a non-binary character is welcome. Component quality. Fair. The honor tokens could stand to be just a touch heavier, but the punch-out money tokens are decent. The corporation cards have a nice thickness to them, but the player screens are far too thin and delicate. Replay value. Incredibly high. Depending on your group, this could easily be your go-to game for a higher player count. It suffers pretty readily from targeting a player to lose, though, so keep that in mind. Regular groups where one person is perceived to always win could be struggle with boxing out players here. Fun to lose. A little bit. Since everyone gets to take turns being the Heist Master, you're guaranteed to play at least once a round. If you get iced out by everyone else, though, you're going to lose, and you're not going to have much fun doing it. Don't play this one in a group where people's feelings are easily hurt. Though, having said that, maybe don't play a lot of games in that group. Our time with Among Thieves was definitely memorable, though some of us were unsure if it would hit the table again. There's a ton of opportunity for metagaming here, as we tried to break the game in different rounds to see if we could figure out an optimal combination of betrayers. Turns out the developers also tried to do this, and it's pretty bulletproof. At the end of the day, it's all going to come down to whether or not you can trust your fellow criminals. And if I learned anything playing this one, it's that you should never, and I mean never, ever trust Megan. She will 100% betray you. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. I'm just here to say, betray. why would you say playing among thieves instead of our time among thieves? Mm. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, please hit that sub button and check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com. And please consider becoming a patron of the channel at patreon.com slash glhfmagic and help us keep making reviews, videos, and podcasts for as little as $5 a month. We're also always looking for new games to review, so if you make games or you know a company who does and wants to have their game reviewed on Good Luck High Five, please reach out to us at glhf at goodluckhighfive.com and we'd be happy to take a look. You can follow me, Captain N the Game Master, on Twitter and Instagram at CaptainNGM, and follow the channel at GLHF Magic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck, high five.